Hey everyone, Dustin here with Tillmore, and I'm also here with Emily, and today we're going to be going over finger weeders, um, kind of how you choose them for your farm, but a lot of what we're going to focus on is some of the mounting options, because we have a lot of different ways you can mount this to um, current machinery that you already have, and so uh, that's one of the kind of the fun things of the way we kind of set up our equipment, uh, but it's also one of the challenging things, and so uh, we get a lot of calls and an opportunity to talk with with uh, you all and different farmers of, of your challenges and needs and uh, and we feel like we've got really honestly solutions about for everyone so yeah. um, go ahead yeah so a couple of things just to keep in mind as we go through some of this stuff um, is one what's your row spacing uh, what size of finger weeder is going to fit in your row so we have nine inch 13 inch and 15 inch that are available on our website uh, another thing to keep in mind is how many rows are you doing? Uh, sometimes it's beneficial to stick with or start with one to two rows and really get those dialed in, and then uh, move move to more from there. Um, and then the last thing to kind of keep in mind as we go through this is uh, what are you mounting it to? What kind of toolbar and what kind of tractor or um, walk behind unit are you using? So those are kind of like questions that we oftentimes hear that we're kind of asking you know we're asking those questions first and then then we're kind of getting uh those responses that helps us to tailor kind of what makes the most sense and you know as emily talked about one to two rows uh you know the, the i'm going to talk about the large trailing arm here um and and this is the perfect one especially you know because this is more designed for larger farms yes mm -hmm. I, we have it mounted on a two inch square tube um, but this can be mounted all the way up to seven inch uh, uh, seven by seven tube and uh, and so those types of toolbars are on larger cultivator um, units that have you know eight sixteen rows mm -hmm. and those are the ones where we definitely say hey try one or two rows um, get it dialed in first because it's a lot easier to make your adjustments on that than it is to do it on 32 rows 16 rows and then have to make all those adjustments it can be frustrating so um, um, the large trailing arm here, um, we do have an uh, overview video if you check a uh, link in the description, um, actually also for finger readers in general. So again, this isn't so much about the function of finger readers as the way to get them set up on your farm. Um, typically your larger row crop farms, um, the larger row crop cultivators, uh, you're doing lar you know, wider spacing, uh, 30 inch, 15 inch, and, and that's where these uh, 15 inch finger readers work really well. It can be used with 13s and 9s, but pretty good rule of thumb is if the bigger the better, if you can fit it in for finger weeders, you get more reach under your crop canopy, things like that. So um, the, again, the large trailing arm here, uh, one way to mount it to different size toolbars gives flotation flexibility in your system uh, and then uh, also a more robust way of mounting it with the uh, inch and a half square tube uh, and then also the different cross clamps. So not that you can't use this on a smaller system, it's just that would be a little overkill and that's why we have some of the other shank options mm -hmm. uh, for that. Yeah, um, so then moving on to kind of our smaller trailing arm. Um, this one, you, as Dustin mentioned, it goes on to a, up to a seven by seven. Um, this one's designed to go to a two by two inch square tube. Um, and again, it has some spring tension here. Uh, and then, yeah. You can yeah, you can it. change your, your, your tension level. There's a spring on both sides. So that gives your, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and then it'll give you a little float um, as you go through. And this is a really good option to like pair with some knives or something to put on the front bar and then have these uh, follow it trailing. Um, and then another, another way to mount onto a two by two inch square tube and have like a little bit of flex in there is to mount it onto a flex time mount. Um, this one, um, you, can, you can use a flat shank or an offset flat shank. Um, and it does have a little flex, which we recommend if, you know, for rockier soils and stuff like that. Um, it's always better to do it that way. Um, so that's another option that we have as well. I think that's one of the things with with the first three that you see here, they're intended to give you flexibility in your system. Yeah. And so 
really any of your tools, they need to have constant ground engagement. And, and these three, especially those two, do a really good job at giving yourself constant ground contact. Um, this is a more economical way to kind of perform a similar function. Um, but uh, and, and so we do a lot with that, that flex time as well. Um, one thing to keep in mind with that is um, that that ground, you know, that the, this has this has down pressure with the spring, as does you know that has different uh, little torsion rods in it that allow you to have that 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 down pressure, and that's really important when you have a lot of rows. Um, mm -hmm. When you not just a lot of rows, but um, really once you get past. I would say two rows that are narrow together, you really should have some sort of flexibility in your system unless you have really good, good uh, flat, flat uh, uh, soil. And so mm -hmm. actually a video we did the other week uh, with Deer Run Farm and the beet hose was a good example of someone who didn't have any flex in their system, but they had really level fields. And mm -hmm. so they could kind of get away with that. Um, and so this helps accommodate and, and, and compensate for, for different, uh, different situations. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you see on these two, they got flat shanks on that. That's got the inch and a half. Here is an inch and a quarter round shank. Um, and this is paired right here with the edge of plastic finger weeder. Um, and so this can be, this head can be tilted. It can be turned on the round shank. Uh, so for your edge of plastic, different levels of aggress aggression um, to the edge. Um, and you actually, we do have some newer, uh, the older style only has these two holes um, here. Uh, we do have some newer ones. If you do want to use a round shank on uh, the standard finger weeder here, um, we do have those, just just let us know specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, we, we do have those available. And again, why would you want that? If you've got an older machine, say a G, a Cub, 140, and you have their current toolbar, you don't want to necessarily switch to a whole two inch square tube system and you have cultivator set up and you've got some inch and a quarter round shanks or seven eighths round shank clamps. Um, if you've got those clamps, then we can, you know, go straight into that. Um, and that's, that can be really valuable there. So, um, the other thing here is again, this is fixed, largely used for edge plastic. Uh, cause you're usually doing one side. That's kind of more ideal what we'd recommend. Uh, here is a, a clamp, a really quick single bolt adjust where you can slide it around your toolbar. Um, we pair this typically behind a trailing arm or with those types of clamps there. Those can be fixed on a toolbar, but we don't usually only recommend it if you're doing it on one or two rows or if you have a level, level, uh, a level bed top. So Again, don't typically recommend just going by itself on uh, on the toolbar, but it, it is an option as well, especially to start. It's a good a good way to start. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so then we can kind of move over here to we have a one and a half inch toolbar setup that goes on our walk behind, um, and these newer shanks are aluminum, um, and so we can mount those up with the teeth and clamps and do like a, like a nine inch finger. Um, and then here in the middle, we have the same clamps and shank set up with the 13s. And then over here, we also have uh, a smaller round shank that you can use to kind of tilt it and rotate it if you want that way. Um, so just, you know, just a variety of options um, for what you're doing. And I think the thing that we don't really show much here, um, is, and, and, and so you see the seven eighths shank there, um, oftentimes on the older Planet Juniors, um, their toolbars are angled back and they would have round, uh, stock, uh, round shanks, uh, uh clamps. And so that's where the round shank really works because if you're on angled, you need to be able to adjust the, the, the direction of it. You can't use a flat shank in that case. Um, so that's where it can really come into play. We don't have shown here at all. This is the new system on inch and a half square tube. We do have for your old bar stock that's used on the Planet Junior setups, mm -hmm. the Simplicity setups. We've got the round shank clamps, the, the standard cross clamps, the mid clamps, anything basically to get you hooked up on those old systems. We do have it. Mm -hmm. um, and not just about finger weeders, but just about anything else to fit on there. Um, and and we be d do a disservice to not mention, um, don't have it displayed here either, but the adaptive cultivator. Um, we have a link down in the description again uh, for kind of the overview video, but 
uh, for vineyard orchard cultivation. Uh, this we have uh, that system hooks up to a two inch, uh, 50 millimeter uh, bar and um, and a lot of old grape hoe uh, side mounts it, it fits directly up on and and so that's a really good system for for that type of market yeah anything else emily we're missing um i just wanted to mention uh if you go to our website and are looking to set up something set up a system um, we're always available to ask questions and give us a call um, but we also have them set up on our website as like kits so you can kind of step through and if you click on like for example the large trailing arm uh, you can select the um, the different pieces and components that would go into um, onto your system there and the same thing with uh, the finger weeders and with the shanks and the clamps that fit onto the correct ones yeah I think that's a good point our older um, we've got the way these are designed uh, with the weld-on piece here and the two holes here, it is really easy to adapt your own systems to if you have them, um, if you have any desire to do that. Um, but if there's something that maybe doesn't make sense or you don't see here that you're wondering about how can I get it hooked up to my old hefty G or some other type of equipment um, or how to get it onto my diamond bar, things like that, um, give us a call. Um, we may already have the solution. It might be an engineer and it might be not on the site yet. Um, or we may not have a solution yet, but we may be able to modify something up for you too. So don't be afraid to give us a call on that. I think the key is, and what we really wanted to show is that there's basically any s number of configuration. I mean, the options are endless. And so, mm -hmm. uh, we, we don't, we rarely have the same setups going out to people because everyone has a little bit of a different, uh, different desire of what they want to do but the key we usually always recommend is definitely pairing things with your finger readers and that's where a lot of these things bring your finger readers back off the main toolbar so it allows you to pair other knives and discs and things like that up on the front uh, front side so uh, yeah give us a call if there's anything that you're uh, you're wanting and we're we would be happy to work through and uh, and have conversations and just explore right now is the best time as most of you guys are out of season uh, yep. just finishing out of season uh, plan now uh, that really is helpful for us and it's helpful for you in the end too uh, before it really gets busy for everyone and uh, and so now is the time to be getting equipment and or at least having the conversation uh, and knowing what you need to be be working towards uh, to improve your setups for next season. Thanks yep. for watching. If there's any questions, just put them down below and, uh, and we'll make sure to answer them. Thanks, have a great day.